From learning interestingly simple mechanics to better understanding smuggling, I'm going to give you 10 tips in 10 minutes to enhance your Starfield experience. Check the timestamps down below for a better custom experience. Let's dive right in. So starting off with tip number one, this is going to be a three in one, solving the contraband issue, the best early game armor and ship. If your playthrough has been like mine, you ran into contraband really early on in your playthrough. The easiest solution to contraband is avoiding cities completely once you run into it. Go out and kill a bunch of spacers until you get the Mantis quest. Once you have the Mantis quest, complete that bitch and get the Mantis ship and the armor and shove all of your contraband into the ship storage. Ultra fast tip number two here, accessing ship storage. Once you're inside your ship, open your personal inventory and at the bottom right, you will see your platforms button option to open the cargo hold. Alternatively, you can equip the cargo hold quest, which is under your activities or misc area under your quests, and it should show you what computer terminal you need to access in order to open your cargo hold inside your ship. Now to finish our three in one tip number one here, voila, you have the power of invisibility and you can smuggle contraband with the Mantis ship and armor. The reason this works is because the Mantis ship has a shielded cargo hold which provides you a chance of passing a smuggling scan. Now, once you get to smuggling, you're gonna want a quick save before you get scanned, but we'll get into that in a minute. Now, in order to sell this contraband, you need to find the Trade Authority, which is easy. Just go to New Atlantis and go to what's called the Well. Just take the tram to the mast area once you land at New Atlantis, take the elevator off to the right side down to the Well, and you'll stumble upon the Trade Authority. So to mention the smuggling scan, once you go to any city with contraband on your ship, you will get scanned by the landing authority. Now pause the game and click quick save, or if you're on PC, push F5 while the scan is happening, and then load your quick save if it fails, and just do that until it passes. It's called save scumming. Now, tip number three. This is a lock picking tip. If you lock pick a lot and you have run into seemingly impossible locks, you are not alone. To make this bit a lot easier on you, try this out. When you open a lock to pick it, look at the options. No matter what lock level it is if your first lock to break doesn't match with any of your largest picks back out and reopen it so for example if you open up a lock you have a four pick option and the slots has five holes in it but none of your four slot picks fit in that hole back out and try again obviously i'll have a display up here to show you so that it makes a little more sense you don't use a digipick until your first placement of a pick. This isn't a 100% guarantee, but it makes it much easier for sure. Tip number four, if you're new to Bethesda games, you might not know this one. If you're a vet Bethesda player, then you probably do. Waiting to refresh merchants. In Starfield, the Trade Authority only needs 24 local hours of wait time to reset their stock. Well, at least their creds, which is the important bit. So when I get a massive haul of contraband, I just sit in the Trade Authority at New Atlantis and I wait 24 hours until I can sell all my stuff, not just my my contraband. If you found any of these tips useful so far, go ahead and drop a sub down below for me. I would really appreciate that. And go ahead and stick around all the way to the end because I have one bonus tip at the end for you. Moving into tip number five, play the main story. This isn't much of a tip as it is a suggestion, but playing the main story progresses your character a lot and without spoiling anything, makes combat a hell of a lot more interesting. Do not forget about this clip from the Starfield Direct on YouTube, if you watched it that is. Tip number six, smuggling Aurora off Neon. This one was a really interesting one for me. I actually have a YouTube short that explains this really well. So here's the 16 by nine instead of nine by 16 so that you can see it in full screen. So you're wondering how to get your precious Aurora out of Neon without getting fined and jailed by Neon security. I'm gonna show you that right now. All right, so the easiest option when you're smuggling Aurora is to come from the Astro Lounge or you can come from the space station landing pad thing all the way at the other end of the map and you're going to want to come all the way down this way to the edge side entrance so this is going to be the space elevator thingamajig and the edge side entrance is right or ebb side sorry it's going to be right here now to keep this short to get through ebb side you want to get above the spaceport area so we're going to fast forward here So you can take whatever route you want, but that's the route I take to get here the fastest. And once you're by this bag of just pile of garbage bags, you'll know you're at the right spot. So now you just jump down here, use your boost pack a couple times, and there you go. 
Now you can smuggle Aurora out of Neon. Congratulations. Tip number seven. Again, this is less of a tip and more of an opinion. Stealth mechanics right now suck ass. Either wait for a patch or don't bother at all with stealth mechanics. Big Sag, it's pretty garbo. I've being seen and heard through walls is insanely annoying, so just find good guns and just run and gun. Sniping from a distance with a suppressed lawgiver, in my experience, along with the Mantis helmet, does work pretty decently, though. I tend to get the caution notification, and I get sprayed at by guns, but I never really get shot at, and the danger notification never really happens. Tip number eight, do some activities. Activities are given utterly randomly by bystanders just talking, literally anybody. Some of these activities can turn into huge adventures. For example, joining a gang on Neon. Some of these are almost more like side quests rather than quote unquote activities. Rolling into tip number nine, second to last, removing traits you changed your mind about. So if you selected some traits in the character creation scene that you don't want anymore, they can be removed through unique ways related to that trait. For example, kid stuff, adorable, Boring Fan and Wanted are the ones I chose. Respectively, those traits can be removed in the following ways. Talking to your parents and telling them you can't afford them anymore. Talking to the Adoring Fan and telling him he can no longer be a fan of you. And lastly, talking to a bounty hunter at any United Colony and asking them to pay off your bounty for a literal tiny price. Lastly, tip number 10. We also have a bonus tip at the end. Aiming while walking and over encumbered will not consume your stamina. So if you're over encumbered and you hate standing still, just pull out a gun and aim down and keep walking. Pretty quick and easy tip. Bonus tip number 11. This will be our last tip. Your scanner and watch are more powerful than you think. Using your scanner early game to detect interactable items helped me learn what was what way faster. I had no clue what all this junk lying around was. I didn't know what was valuable. Opening the scanner helped me highlight everything in the room that was grabbable, and that helped me sort out what was what a lot quicker. Along with that, equipping the scanner automatically side equips your cutter for quick mining access. So if you're on a planet and you're scanning for resources, you automatically have your cutter equipped, and then when you close the scanner, it re-equips your weapon that you had equipped prior. Additionally, your watch changes when you open the scanner, giving you insights into the planet name, gravity effects, temperature, and O2 percentage. Not really sure what the O2 percentage means. I don't know. Lastly, the watch will also indicate to you what type of damage you're suffering from. So as well as planetary effects like radiation, all you need to do is match that symbol with the right health item symbol to heal it clip on screen so that it's easier to understand. All right, so we ended up with 14 tips in this video. That's a little more than 10 if you count the three in one for the first tip. I hope you found all of them useful, but drop a comment down below of your favorite tip. Other than that, stay tuned for more gaming content and we'll talk again real soon. Peace.